Welcome back to Rules of Engagement with Axlab, presented to you by MLG. We're on the episode called Developing Fundamentals. This episode airs every Tuesday starting at 5 p.m. running until shortly before 6. And uh, this episode's about learning the basic concepts of the game. So, so far we've gone over the basic way the economy works in StarCraft 2, how much resources workers gather, and how much resources you can spend per production building you build, at least how to figure that out. Uh, then we went on to micro concepts. I covered the two most important micro concepts to really figure out when you're just basically trying to control your units. One thing I didn't cover in that last section I really want to emphasize, when you're starting the game, when in doubt, don't micro. Just launch your guys on attack move behind your opponents. Just click the A button, left click behind your opponent's army, let them do their own thing, and at least they'll, they'll ensure that they're doing pretty good damage. As soon as you start trying to control them too much, things often go haywire, so when in doubt, don't micro. Only micro if you're really confident you have a good idea on what exactly you're going to do. Uh, of course, if there's any questions you had in those segments, I didn't cover it quite as much as you, you wanted me to cover it, uh, feel free, log on to Twitter, tweet at me, at ISAXLAV. Uh, before, uh, by the end of this segment, any tweets you sent to me, we're going to throw them in into questions at the end of the show, and uh, it'll clarify a couple issues here and there. Feel free to ask me any questions you like, even if it's something maybe we didn't even talk about in this show. If it's something you think is really interesting, maybe pertains to learning the game, shoot it at me and we'll cover it at the end of the show. But let's get into the third segment for this show, which is going to be build order concepts. Uh, the first thing to know is basically what kind of build do you want to do. Before that, you have to know what build means. So in StarCraft, when we talk about the build a player uses, we're talking about the order in which they construct buildings. Uh, a basic build a Terran might use we would use in lingo a two racks build. Now that's a that's kind of a more advanced player lingo. But to translate it, what it means is the the Terran player is going to open with nothing but SCVs, depots, and command centers, and then they're going to build two barracks simultaneously, or, or one after the other, and that's their first two non-economic building they're going to construct. Uh, so when you're thinking about what kind of build you want to do, there's several options. There's, there's really two options for builds, actually. We're going to reduce it, make it a little simple for you guys. There's timing builds, and then there's also uh, builds where you aim for a late game composition. Now, you're thinking, what's a timing build? A timing build is where you want to launch an attack at your opponent, and you have a certain idea of, of what type of attack you want to launch. So you can launch one base timing builds, two base, three base, whatever. That, that's almost a side part. Uh, the important part is to understand, okay, I'm coming into this game, with the, with the idea that I want to attack my opponent uh, with a certain uh, unit composition. And then we're going to talk about how to, how to basically make that as efficient as possible. The next stage, uh, the other type of build is I want to get to this composition. Whether it's going to be Breed Lord and Faster, Roach Hide, or whatever it is. You say, I want to get a bunch of, this, bunch of these units and then use them well. So those are two types of builds. Attacking your opponent or just attaining a certain composition. We're going to start out with first how to construct your own timing build and a couple things you need to look at it. So to illustrate this, I'm just going to have in the background, I'm going to use it as reference, a replay between Rain and Vibe from the MLG full championship play. Now one thing to note about this game is this is a professional level game, all right? So these guys are very, very good at what they do. We're going to look at this through Rain's perspective. And the important thing isn't to copy this build or to notice exactly when or what he's doing things, but to understand the concepts behind the build. So uh, Rain is going to plan on doing a timing build. He's already decided this before the game. He says, you know what? I want to execute a timing build. So what he's doing is, he's, he, first he has to pick what units do I want to attack with, okay? This game he's going to decide, I want to do an immortal sentry timing build. So he's going to get immortals and he's going to get sentries. Immortals is the highest tech unit he's getting to. The first thing is to decide that. What's the highest tech unit I want to get to before I launch my attack? He's going to decide immortals. The next question is, I'm going to spend this money teching to this unit. In the case of Immortals, that's going to be a robotics facility. Uh, and that's, you know, 200 minerals, 100 gas. That's a significant investment. So if I'm spending this money teching to this unit, how many of these high-tech units do I have to produce before they can actually pay off for the cost of investing in that tech? In this case, Rain decides it's going to be three Immortals. It's usually, for high-tech units, it's usually somewhere in the 2 to 6 range. So let's say you want to base your attack off of Colossi. You want to base it off of Siege Tanks. You probably don't want to attack when you just get a single Colossi or a single Siege Tank. You want to wait for somewhere in a 2 to 6 range to really maximize that uh, high-tech unit efficiency. So you're spending money on tech, but then you're going to get a couple of these tech units, so it actually kind of compensates for that, that money loss investment earlier. 
So he decides, I want to get three Immortals, and I'm going to launch my attack. The next thing he wants to decide, how many support units do I need with my, with my high-tech units in order to make this attack reasonable chance of success? So you know what? A couple of Immortals probably aren't very effective on their own. They're going to get stormed over by Zerdians or Roaches or what have you. So I want maybe about 10 to 20 gateway units with my three Immortals. And when you're, when you're doing your builds, you don't have to pick the right number. Just pick a number and experiment with it and see if it works. The next step is to say, okay, if I want 10 to 20 gateway units and three Immortals, how much food is that? That's going to be, you know, let's say it's 15 gateway units. Gateway units are two food each, that's 30 food. The three Immortals are four food each. Combined, that's four, 42 food. Then you're going to think, what economy should I get to before I start production to get this amount of army in the fastest way possible? A little shortcut for you guys. If the army you want to attack with is 30 food or less, stay on one base. If the, if the army you want to attack with is between 30 food and 60 food, go to two bases before you start your production. If the army is it's more than 60 food total of army when you want to launch your attack, you want to go to three base production first, or go, go to three base economy, then get your production, then attack. So that's the, the basic steps is what tech building you want to get. He's decided the robotics. We see two immortals coming up here. How much support does he want to get? Roughly between 10 and 20 gateway units. He's got about six right now. He's going to wait for maybe one more warp, and then he's going to go. And then, of course, what, what's the best economy to get to get that type of army in the most efficient way possible. With this much supply, it's two bases. So he went to two bases of economy. Then he cut his worker production once he had two full bases going, and he's, he sent it all into units that he's going to launch to attack. This is basically the idea behind a timing build. And timing builds can range. It can be very early. Right? In this case, it was the immortal sentry type attack. Uh, or, or they can be later. They can be three bases with 150 food. Uh, if, let's say, you want to say, I want to do an immortal timing attack, but I want to get six immortals, then attack. Then you're like, well, to support six immortals, I probably want about maybe 30 to 40 gateway units. Well, all of a sudden, we're talking about 100 food here. And 100 food, you know, if you want to get 100 food off two bases, it's going to take you a little while. You're better off getting three bases first and then getting 100 food of army to support it. On the other hand, let's say you say, you know what? I want to get at my opponent really early. I want to launch a timing attack with six stalkers. Well, you know what? Six stalkers, that's only 12 food. The fastest way to launch a six stalker attack is just to stay on one base, grab six stalkers as fast as you can, and then go. So the, it's like a three-step process to developing your own timing attack. This is how Rain did it. We can see he hit it at a perfect time. His opponent had very little to deal with it. It worked out great for him. Uh, I mean, if you want to use this build, go for it. But the most important thing is to understand how to construct your builds. Uh, let's say you're at home. Grab yourself a piece of paper and say, what unit do I think is cool? You know what? I like Colossi. So you write down Colossi timing. OK, you know, how many Colossi do I want? It could be anywhere between two and five, probably. So whatever number you pick down, how much support do I want, and then figure out how, how much economy to get before you start the production in order to hit that army size in the fastest way possible. Of course, it takes a lot of trial and error, but that's a general consensus. So. Uh, I know, unfortunately, today I'm not really going to get to cover how to deal with other types of builds, uh, per se, the army composition builds. We're going to cover that in next week's episode on Tuesday, how to play a build where you're not aiming for an attack, but you just want to get, you know what, I like Hydra, just, let me just get a bunch of them, and then I'll figure out what to do later. Uh, so we're going to talk about that in next episode, but today let's do a quick recap about timing builds. Uh, three most important things. What units do you want to attack with? Um, so that, that's what, what kind of build timing attack. Optimize it. This is what I'm talking about. What units do you want to attack with? Uh, the second part is uh, how much support for those tech units do you want? Or you might not even want tech units, but there's how but your total army you want to attack with. Then the second step is going to be how much economy to get before you start building that army in order to, to get that in the fastest way possible. Every 30 food is one base. Of course, go on the ladder, test if it doesn't work. Don't, you know, don't say if the build's bad, maybe work on it, fix around a bit. Shoot it to me, I'll, I'll talk about it on Thursday. Uh, anyway, that's been your build order concepts. We'll do a little more in-depth on that next week. We're going to take a short break, then we're going to get on to question and answer section.